All right. Um, so we're going to talk about current and future state of Istio. So how many of you have used Istio before or heard of Istio? Most of everybody. How many of you heard Istio had a big announcement last week about ambient service mesh? All right, a few of you, very good. Um, so a little bit quick introduction about me. Uh, I've been working on the Istio project probably for five plus years now. Uh, while I was at IBM, so I worked at IBM for 19 years. I've been one of the founding contributor and also one of the founding uh, technical oversight committee and steering committee member of Istio. I actually wrote a book about Istio, uh, Istio Explained, uh, which helps you to get started with Istio. Um, I'm also one of the new CNCF ambassadors. And uh, one of my fun job while I was at IBM was writing patent disclosures. And apparently I was uh, pretty successful doing that. Before I leave IBM um, about a year ago, I actually captured, I have 207 uh, patents um, that IBM filed for me, uh, and that it's become issued, um, either with US Patent Office or some of the patent office across the world. So that's a little bit of background about me. Um, I now work on a little, work for a little company called Solo. How many of you heard of our company? All right, a few of you, very good. Uh, so it's a startup. When I joined Solo, uh, I'm like the 30th employee. So I'm now leading the open source contribution at Solo. Um, we are very well funded. We have hundreds of customers, some of the big brand, brand names like um, gosh, this is a lot. Uh, American Express, for example, BMW. So all these are our customers. And we recently valued a $1 billion valuation. So we are a leader in application network. Um, at Solo, we're very passionate about educating our users, particularly on things that we care about, which are Istio, Envoy, uh, eBPF, and Cilium. So if you scan that QR code, that gives you free access to our Solo Academy, where we provide a Kubernetes environment in the cloud where you can go through the training, which includes the newest Istio ambient training. I actually wrote some of these trainings <laughs> when I first joined Solo. Um, so now I want to turn your attention to Istio, which is the industry's leading service mesh uh, per the past two CNCF surveys. So the history of Istio started with 2017. I was part of the launch while I was at IBM. And in around 2019 to 2020, Istio had a major architecture change where we simplify Istio uh, Mixer, there was Istio Pilot, there was uh, Istio Citadel. Any of you remember all that? We actually simplify it to be Istio D, while the D stands for daemon. And we get rid of the Mixer component. It becomes the part of the data plane. So that was a major innovation in the Istio community. Now look forward, this year in April, we just had an Istio uh, Con. I was the conference co-chair, and Eric Brewer from Google announced Istio is going to CNCF. I believe uh, we just had approval from the CNCF TOC about that, so really excited about that. And uh, we just had another big announcement last week uh, about Ambient. So today, uh, I'm so excited to take you through, you know, why did we create Ambient uh, as a new data plane mode in Istio and how, you know, what's the story behind of Ambient? So let's start with why Ambient, right? Istio has been very, very successful, the most successful service mesh out there, mostly deployed in production. We have customers running Istio, you know, in thousands of their clusters. So why do we create Ambient? So if I'm going to ask you to think about what do you want from a service mesh, what would you say? Like what would be the top word or top three things you come, uh, if I ask you this question, what do you want from service mesh? Anyone wants to say something? No, you guys don't have an opinion? That can't be it. 
All right, I'll share with my opinion if you guys are not going to share. So um, there's a lot of things. I think the number one thing is transparency. How many of you agree with that? You want the service mesh to be transparent to your application so that your application doesn't need to know service mesh exists. You want to incremental adopt a service mesh so you don't have to pay for everything, right? You don't want to pay for layer seven, header-based processing. You don't want to pay for retry resilience where well, you don't need it, right? So that's also very important. You want to be very easy to upgrade, very easy to operate. You want to be secure, right? Because service mesh is a security product. Most of our customers are using service mesh to achieve zero trust, right? It has to be secure itself and you want it to be performed really well so it doesn't increase much latency on top of your application. So let's talk about the challenges with Sidecar today. The biggest challenge I would say is the transparency, right? You all know as you run Istio today with the Sidecar, it's not entirely transparent to your application because you have to kind of carry that Sidecar always with you, right? Because you rely on that Sidecar to solve these challenging solved by service mesh, which is connect, secure, and observe, right? Um, so, so that requires you um, either run automatic sidecar injection or run manual sidecar injection. So you kind of rely on a control plan to inject the sidecar for you. So the end of the YAML is not as predictable to you as you had hoped for. Um, the second issue is if you ever use Sidecar, um, it, uh, you will know that Kubernetes doesn't native support uh, a Sidecar model. There was a cap proposal in Kubernetes about Sidecar, but it didn't go any well. So essentially, there is a sequence problem between your Sidecar container to your application container, right? What if your Sidecar uh, maybe reaches running after your application reaches running? What if your Sidecar was shut down before your application uh, was shut down, right? Because you need the Sidecar to be there to secure your traffic for you. So what if it's not at the right order? So that unfortunately has caused tons of problems for our customers. And then the other thing is, um, unfortunately Envoy, as secure as it is, it has a lot of CVE in layer seven processing, particularly because processing headers, uh, processing rejects are very complicated things to do. Um, so unfortunately, whenever it's still an Envoy rollout a CVE, that you would have to restart your application because that sidecar needs a refresh but your application may not have any CVE. So you could potentially you know, generate an unnecessary restart and because of the sidecar. And last not the least, there are certain applications are not compatible with sidecar. For example, Kubernetes jobs, right? When the Kubernetes job finish, what about the sidecar? Does it automatically finish? Today, Istio doesn't support jobs. Uh, what if uh, like MySQL who speak server first and first protocols, uh, Istio doesn't handle them really well because we couldn't do protocol detection really well. And as the server was sending the first traffic. So these are the transparency issue with sidecar. The other issue with sidecar is incremental adoption. As I was mentioning earlier, you would always adopt a sidecar regardless whether you just need one single feature of Istio. Maybe you just need Mitchell TLS. Maybe you just need telemetry or layer four or layer seven. Maybe you just need retry or uh, header-based routing. You always have to pay for the whole sidecar regardless whether you are using it or not, right? So, um, so most of the users, we actually find the, the only reason they adopt a service mesh, particularly when I was at IBM, every single customer and internal user we talk to, it's always about their security team said, look, in order to run your microservices in the cloud, you have to have mutual TLS, you have to have FIPS compliance. And the only way to do that is either you do it yourself or you delegate to a service mesh to accomplish that for you. And a lot of people delegate to service mesh to do that. Um, but you're paying for the entire Envoy sidecar 
who can do telemetry, who can do layer seven processing, who can do resilience. So you're paying for all that, even though you just need mutual TLS cryptographic based identity for your application. Um, so that's another sec uh, second challenge I would say with sidecar. So there are certain other challenges with sidecar, um, particularly in needs for other areas I would want to highlight. So for instance, security, uh, you probably think sidecar are very, very secure. In theory, they are. But one of the challenges is what if your application has vulnerability uh, that could be a attack surface for the hacker, right? So when the hacker gets into your application, they automatically get to the sidecar, which means they automatically get to the rest of the service mesh infrastructure. So that may not be as desired as you want to. The other thing is the over provision of resources right because of the cycle has minimum and requirement you tend to have to provision the resources regardless whether you need it 100% of the time or maybe you just need 5% of the time you still have to kind of have the resource provision out there and also because the sidecar doesn't scale uh, independently out of your application container so if you run like 10 replica for your uh, web service you still have to drag down the 10 sidecar but in theory you could potentially have two replica of envoy proxy doing the work instead of 10 so you don't have that control uh, complicated to operate uh, we talk about upgrade was one of the thing we talk about sidecar injection was one of the thing in general we've heard a lot of feedback from our, our istio customers they are relative cost to upgrade and they were afraid to upgrade sometimes and performance uh, I think it's uh, on the list but it's actually on a lower concern because it's still in general performance uh, we're, in, we're talking about milliseconds delay introduced to the application so a little bit of uh, fun tweets uh, this is a tweet from Akaya uh, when Istio initially introduced namespace isolation through the sidecar resource and he was so happy to see you know the resources uh, used by Istio particularly memory in this case went down dramatically for uh, for his cluster so that was very cool um, the other uh, thing is uh, I find this from a Cloud Foundry uh, repository where they were saying uh, Istio has re uh, resource requirement it was excessive for their needs, right? Because in Cloud Foundry, I mean, their sidecar probably doesn't do a lot of work. And interestingly enough, I also found this uh, message uh, on our board, discussion board of Istio community, where they say the default resource limits for Istio proxy sidecar, uh, they want to remove that. So you can see users have different requirements. Some users say, you know, I don't want to have your cap on the default resource limit. Some user will say, you know, your resource was excessive for my needs. So they can control that, but the problem is it's harder to control that for different workload. So this is where the MBM comes in. It's your MBM mesh is intended to introduce a new sidecar list mode in Istio, so your application doesn't have to run with sidecar, so that you can potentially run your application same as it is. Uh, you just included part of Istio service mesh. You could also run your application as sidecar if you choose to. So we, we continue to support both. So we've got a couple of blogs out there on istio.io. If you're interested, we have a launch blog. We have a guide study guide. I'm actually one of the co-authors for these two blogs. We heard a lot of concerns from our user. What about sidecar? What about security of sidecar? How does this compare to sidecar? So we wrote a security deep dive on that. Um, so last week, I actually did this tweet for Istio, um, for the Istio account. As you can see, there was a lot of excitement in the community. And we also got uh, Matt, Matt Klein, who is the Envoy creator, endorsed the approach that Istio introduced regarding, uh, regarding ambient architecture. So let's dive into how ambient is doing this. So uh, this is some, uh, this is uh, ambient, it, 
primarily started with uh, Solo and Google, uh, contribute to the community, and this is something we're welcoming everybody else in the community to participate. So right now it's an experimental branch in the Istio repo, and we're hoping to contribute to the main branch very, very soon. So primarily, Ambient was introduced for simplified operation, the transparency I was talking about. Do you be able to include applications into your mesh without sidecar to be able to upgrade your proxy or um, your layer for uh, layer to the security portion without disrupting of your application. So that's the primary goal of Ambient. And the second goal is reduce the cost. So you don't have to over provision your sidecar resources. You can provision based on what you need. And you, if you don't need a uh, layer seven processing, you could just run a light service mesh. Um, and uh, the third goal is improve the performance. So what exactly is ambient service mesh? So there's a couple of innovation of ambient service mesh. The biggest innovation I would say is the two layer approach where we introduce two layers to the data plane, right? So in this uh, diagram, for instance, we're saying we have a layer called uh, secure overlay layer that handles layer for processing. So what does that mean? So that means uh, this particular layer, uh, which we call zero trust tunnel, who can uh, establish uh, HTTP, uh, secure HTTP tunnel between um, your applications on behalf of the applications for you uh, for every single pass co-located on that particular node. So the Z tunnel, you can think about it as a CNI running as a daemon set on your node as a CNI plugin. And it takes care of uh, establish um, Neutral tier, it takes care of, so first take care of the identity, right? So be able to figure out cryptographic identity based on your pod information. And then takes care of upgrading that connection to mutual TLS as application A calls application B, the Z tunnel located on application A pods um, node would take care of getting the right uh, private and public key signed with the Istio control plane and be able to upgrade the connection to mutual TLS when sending to the target uh, source, uh, which would be uh, received on the target Z tunnel. So uh, from, a, from a business owner perspective, we're looking at reduce um, compute costs, right? Because you're not paying for every single sidecar as purple on the diagram. You're paying for Z tunnel per node to help you handle uh, layer for uh, zero trust uh, security. Um, we are, we, from a platform team perspective, you simplify operation. So instead of inject that sidecar, all you need to do is kind of label your namespace. You say, I want this particular namespace to be part of ambient. And then the Z tunnel would manage the paths in that namespace for you, uh, for the co-located Z tunnel. So it's reduced maintenance for you without you needing to worry about uh, upgrading your application uh, when a sidecar needs update. Um, the biggest benefit, in my opinion, is the transparency, really. You just uh, include uh, by labeling uh, the namespace uh, without the application to restart, without application owner to do anything. Um, so the other thing we introduced, we mentioned two layer, right? So we talk about the layer four layer, which is the secure overlay layer. The second layer is the layer seven processing layer. So in Istio community, we don't believe you could uh, do layer seven processing for Envoy uh, for multi-tenancy. We don't believe that's the right approach because uh, you know the noise label, you know the cost of attrition, you know what if uh, you know one tenant impact the other tenancy. So we believe. Uh, I think this is also goes back to Matt Klein was uh, tweeting about we're doing the right approach. Is about uh, the waypoint proxy who is essentially is a layer seven processing proxy for us, 
uh, is per service account, right? So it's per identity. So every single identity in the mesh has its own waypoint proxy if needs to be. It's optional. You don't necessarily have to have it. But if you need uh, layer 7 processing, um, like resiliency or header-based routing, canary testing, or maybe layer 7 telemetry, then that's when you deploy a waypoint proxy for your service account, which are used by your service. So it's optional. Uh, it's highly configurable. So this approach allows c continue on the benefits we discussed. It's pretty much same benefits, right? Reduce compute costs because it's optional. It simplifies the operation because it doesn't inject any sidecar. You can upgrade the waypoint proxy independent of your application. And uh, it's also transparent to your application. So you don't have to break anything. So if you take a detailed look of the layer seven uh, processing layer and also the secure overlay layer, you can see secure overlay layer provides all the benefits related to layer four, whether it's traffic management, security, authorization policy, uh, observability. So that's when you need uh, Z tunnel, uh, which is there by default with the ambient profile. All you need to do is label your namespace to enroll your pods as part of ambient. Uh, if you actually do need layer seven processing, then you start to pay for a waypoint proxy. So these are the traffic management on layer seven, like the routing, low balancing, circuit breaking, resilience feature, um, or security where it reach authorization policy. For example, you need to uh, say, I'm only going to allow get method for this particular JWT claim, maybe only for this header. Uh, so for those scenarios um, or observability where you need HTTP-based metric, access logging, distribute tracing, that's when you want to look into waypoint proxy, but it's completely optional only if you need it. Um, the other thing I want to quickly highlight is Sidecar does have a place. It's continued to be supported. So you can see Sidecar and Sidecar this coexist. The Istio control plane, which is one single Istio control plane, it supports both modes. Um, so it can support Sidecar along with Sidecar this. So this enables the maximum flexibility that you can choose um, based on what you need. Now, let's talk about how you actually want to add in application to Ambient. Uh, it's actually really, really simple. Uh, how many of you use Sidecar injection using on a namespace layer today? Like you use kubectl label namespace, right? So the exact same way you label your namespace for Sidecar injection, you put on a different label called the data plane equals ambient, that enables that particular namespace, every single pods in that namespace to be part of ambient. Um, so inside of one single Kubernetes cluster, you could have full part of NBM bar is with sidecar, and you could have cheese without anything in the mesh, and you could have beer as part of NBM. So it's very flexible. You choose based on your needs. Now let's talk about ambient architecture for a second. So we talk about Z tunnel, uh, which is um, part of the ambient profile, right? So the moment Z tunnel starts to manage your paths is when you start to add that data plane ambient label of your namespace. Um, the layer seven, the waypoint proxy, we talk about, sorry, it, the diagram has PAP, apologies, it should be waypoint proxy. So we actually initially had a name called policy enforcement points, but we decided to rename it to PAP before the announcement. Forgot to update that. So essentially, uh, the, the waypoint proxy is an optional component only if you need layer seven. The Istio control plane is sending, pushing configurations for Z tunnel along with waypoint proxy. So the Istio D control plane um, is a well of uh, you know all the endpoints your application A B C D in the cluster is also a well of all the connected endpoints which are Z tunnel and the pro waypoint proxy and then it knows to push the right configuration through XDS um, config down to uh, these uh, Z tunnel and and waypoint proxy. 
Uh, on the secure overlay layer, which is provided by Z tunnel, you can see when application A calls application B, it actually goes through plain text uh, from application A to Z tunnel on the application A co-located on the same node uh, of application A's Z tunnel. And then when the source Z tunnel calls uh, the application B, the application B's Z tunnel is going to capture that traffic. So the traffic would send to the target um, Z tunnel first, uh, who runs on the same node as application B. And, uh, and then from there, it's going to be plain text from uh, the targeted Z tunnel to application B. So this means from source Z tunnel to the target uh, Z destination Z tunnel, it's going to be encrypted, mutual TLS encrypted traffic with uh, HBone, HPP uh, overlay um, through HTTP connect. So it's going to be encapsulated, it's going to be on single port, which we're going to explain that a little bit more very soon. On the layer seven processing layer, um, as we mentioned, waypoint proxy is optional, but in the case you need a waypoint proxy because you need layer seven processing, for instance, in this case, application B do needs a layer, uh, waypoint proxy, then uh, Istio control plane is intelligent to tell the source Z tunnel, which on, runs on the same node as application A, that application B has a, uh, has a waypoint proxy. The traffic has to be routed to the waypoint proxy before the traffic can continue to be sent to application B, which would be uh, captured by the application B's uh, Z tunnel before it reaches to application B. So as you can see, uh, that connection in orange is all mutual TLS. It's all encapsulated using uh, the HTTP Connect uh, tunnel. So let's take a minute to talk about HBone. So this is a new thing that was contributed to upstream in Istio. It's our intention to have it in upstream so the sidecar can also support HBone. So essentially, HBone allows all the traffic tunnels through a single mutual TLS connection using HTTP Connect. And it allowed that connection to be reused as long as the source and target uses the same uh, uh, service account pair, right? So from application A to application B, it allows you to use uh, the same connection regardless whether you have multiple requests uh, because that so source and uh, destination is using the same uh, identity pair of service account. It uh, helps to amortize the cost of mutual TLS handshake over multiple connections because it's the same tunnel that you could use uh, for multiple connection as long as the source and target pair is the same. Uh, one nice thing about uh, HBone is you don't need to sniff anymore. It doesn't require any metadata exchange. Um, so it's always secure, it's always mutual TL secure, so there's no permissive in this mode. Um, so it's essentially decouple the mutual TLS encryption from the application to Z tunnel. So Z tunnel is solely in charge of that without you know, having the sidecar running next to your application. So the next question, if you're using Istio today, you might be wondering, what if about my existing Istio resources, whatever I'm using gateway resource, whatever I'm using virtual service, whatever I'm using destination rule. So the existing Istio resources are expected to continue to work, even though today maybe some of the resources were still working through the details, such as service entry, uh, but it's our intention that you don't have to change any of your resources as you move freely from sidecar to sidecar this, or maybe from sidecar this back to sidecar if you actually have such a scenario. So what about my sidecar? if you are wondering, right? So as I was mentioning earlier, we added, uh, we added to Istio upstream to support Edgebone for sidecar. So the sidecar would be able to send traffic through the Edgebone encapsulation to Z tunnel. So that enables the application running with sidecar be able to talk to uh, the application managed by the ambient Z tunnel. So with that, uh, let's go to a live demo. I think I only have 10 minutes. I will try to 
be quick. All right. Um, so let me clear out my screen a little bit. Um, all right. So what we are going to do uh, is uh, I'm going to show you a live demo. Sorry, I can't type. <laughs> All right, so um, I actually have Bookinfo installed. Um, so you are going to see Unchange, but I'm going to bring my K9S. Um, so essentially, I was worried about network bandwidth. So I installed Bookinfo ahead of time. I also installed two clients, uh, which is Sleep. If you use uh, the Sleep from Istio, it's basically just a Kirk uh, client that allow you to curl a request. And not sleep is also a Kirk client. The only reason I put could it no sleep is it has a different identity. So with that, uh, we are, um, you can see my cluster. Basically, I have the famous Bookinfo. How many of you use Bookinfo application before in from Istio? All right, a few of you. Good job. <laughs> All right, so you can see I have Bookinfo running. I have... Um, all right, I have my sleep and not sleep running, right? So uh, what if I'm going to call my book info from sleep, right? I got a book info, a uh, simple bookstore app. So that's all expected. So that's working. So the next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to go to enable TCP dump on the product page node. Uh, so this is the command I'm going to copy over because I can't remember the command. So I end up writing a script to print out the command. So as you can see, product page runs on ambient work too. Um, so what I'm going to do is, sorry, that did a copy for me. So um, let me recopy this. So um, so we're going to go to uh, Ambient Worker 2, which product page runs, and enable TCP dump. Not that I'm only enable TCP dump on 9080 and 15008. Why? Because Book Info product page runs on 9080 and also 15008. If you remember, that's the Edgebone port, right? So we are only listen to traffic on these two ports because the other ports could generate too much traffic for us to look. So now what we're going to do is call um, sleep to a uh, product page. As you can see, the traffic comes in, it's plain text, right? Because it's not encrypted traffic, right? This is when your security team may have an issue. Hey, you're doing microservices, you're not encrypting your traffic, you're not doing Metro TLS, right? Um, so if they do have an issue, let's go ahead and install Ambient. So you can see I'm just using Istio Cardo to install Ambient. I'm pray the Wi-Fi is going to be good on me. Um, and Istio Ambient is an Ambient profile. So basically I specify the Ambient profile and I specify, let's go ahead and uh, put access log on so I can actually see some of the logs. So all right, uh, let's walk through the Ambient components. Uh, we talk about Istio Control Plane, which is the Istio D. Uh, we talk about Z tunnel in my cluster. I have three nodes. So I have a control plane and also uh, uh, worker two and worker one. Uh, we also install Istio Ingress Gateway as part of the ambient profile. All right. So we got Istio installed. It's just that easy. So now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to expose the product page on Istio Ingress Gateway so people outside of the cluster can access the product page. Uh, because I'm only running on Mac and the Meta LB with Mac doesn't work very well. Um, so I'm going to access it through uh, the sleep client. Um, but you can see the sleep client. Uh, um, hits on the Istio Ingress Gateway instead of hits on the product page directly. So, so you can see that's uh, what this uh, gateway service and virtual service uh, resource did for me. Essentially, expose my product page to Istio Ingress Gateway. So if my Istio Ingress Gateway has a low balance of IP, then I would be able to access it. All right, so that works too. Okay, so now the question is, uh, what about adding our services to Ambient, right? So we talk about label the namespace, right? So all we need to do is add in data mode Ambient. So we've labeled the namespace. All right, let's enable TCP dump, which we have the TCP dump here pretty much still running. All right, so the next thing we're going to do, we're going to call Bookinfo from the sleep 
and uh, to the Istio Ingress Gateway to Bookingfo. So you can see I no longer have plain text traffic. I actually have mutual TLS encrypted traffic uh, with uh, service account based identity. Um, and this is all provided by Z Tunnel without me doing anything. The only thing I did was install Istio and added the label to um, my default namespace. So let's check out how this works, right? What are the certificates, right? You showed me encrypted traffic, but you know, how exactly it works? How is the identity derived, right? So these are the two uh, worker uh, Z tunnel, worker one and worker two. Remember I said I have two nodes. So if you run the secret proxy config secret command, you can see these are the certificates managed by Z tunnel. And if I run the, um, the same command on my second Z tunnel, you can see my product page is actually right there, right? So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to dive into one of the X509 certificate managed by the second Z tunnel. So I expect to see the product page certificate. So this is a certificate signed by the Istio, uh, the Kubernetes cluster, right? Issuer is cluster.local. It's only valid for 24 hours until next day. And uh, let's look at uh, the SAN, right? It's based on the service account of uh, booking for product page. So this is pretty much same as the sidecar today. Now, the next thing we're going to do is enable our authorization policy on layer four uh, from allow sleep and uh, Istio ingress gateway to access product page. Um, so what we're doing is apply this policy and uh, we're going to do uh, a curl command, right? From, okay, so this curl command works. It's expected to work because we're calling is through Istio Ingress Gateway, and now we're cur curling from, um, now what we're doing now is curling from not sleep. So this would fail because the Z tunnel on the target side would reject that. Um, so this is also provided by the Z tunnel automatically. So what if you're ready for some layer seven function? Remember I mentioned that's optional. You don't have to enable only if you need to. The way to do that is to deploy a gateway resource. Um, the key thing is put your gateway class as Istio mesh and specify your service account as an annotation. So for instance, in this case, I'm deploy a waypoint proxy for booking for product page. So if you go here, you can see the waypoint proxy is running and you can see the logs here, right? So what I'm going to do next is, let's do a layer seven authorization policy. And in this case, we're going to say, I'm going to only enable the get method. So I don't want to allow delete or update or post, you know, nothing, you know, should be allowed based on zero trust configuration, right? We should allow the minimum that can be allowed. So you can see the delete is rejected. If you go to the logs here, you can see 403 is rejected um, by the waypoint proxy, right? So it's doing the work we wanted to do. Um, and you can see, you know, if you do get commands, it continue work. You can also get metrics, same as sidecar today. If you hit down the stats premises endpoint, right, you get all the metrics. Uh, the Istio request total, you know, any HTTP layer related uh, metrics. Mm -hmm. Then the last thing we're going to do is uh, deploy a virtual service that inject a five seconds delay uh, to our product page. So with that, uh, if we call a product page uh, from sleep, now we're calling through the Istio ingress gateway, we're gonna see five seconds. So if you count five, yeah, that's the five seconds delay. It does take a little bit longer. And now if you don't like ambient, so I talk a lot, if you don't like ambient, all you need to do is put on your namespace to say, you know, guess what? I don't want ambient, you know, let's uninstall Istio. And uh, you know, let's visit the product page, you book info, it's continue to work, right? But the problem is you go back to plain text. So if your security team are okay, you know, that's your choice. Uh, with that, I believe uh, that's the demo. Um,
these are the key takeaway I have uh, transparency two layer approach with Z tunnel and waypoint proxy you know the value of ambient simplified operation cost uh, improved performance there's no it's still API change and it can interrupt with sidecar there are a lot of resources because I only have this much time um, so we have a Istio uh, workshop with Ambient. So if you're interested, go ahead and register for that. Uh, we have run live stream. We wrote multiple blogs. So scan that QR code. That's when you can register for our workshop. I think I may have one minute for questions. Um, if not, I'll be here to answer any questions you guys have. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate everybody. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions? Uh, oh, yeah. How many waypoint proxies does one need? Okay, uh, the question is I didn't get how many waypoint proxy yeah, like you the need. Z tunnel is clearly one per node, right? But yeah, so, uh, yeah, that's right. So, Z tunnel is one per node. Waypoint proxy, you have control. So, first of all, your control point is do you need a waypoint proxy for your application, right? So, that's a checkbox, yes or no. Once you check yes, and then the second question is how many replicas do you need for your waypoint proxy, right? So, depends on your workload. You could potentially run two to five to six to 10. The beauty of waypoint proxy, though, is it scales independently independently out of your application. So if your application runs 20 replica, you could potentially still run three or four waypoint proxy and you ends up to be a lot more friendly for your wallet because you are paying way less. With Sidecar, you don't have that choice because you just have stuck with 20. Yeah, there's no choice. Yeah, that's the beauty of the waypoint and it's also the beauty of the separation. Yeah, good question. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Well, thanks, everybody. Hope you guys enjoy Dublin and the Open Source Summit. <laughs>